Post-earthquake, we lost 73 grounds in Christchurch. We had an emergency meeting with the clubs to say, are we going to have a season? That's how bad it was. The damage to grounds was really the, you know, the liquefaction. So we're talking about the, basically all the soils under the, under the base, basically splitting and, and having the, the water tables rise. It's unreal. I think the major concern was, yeah, as a club we're in trouble and facilities are gone, but, but it was just the concerns of how safe our members were. We, we had quite a few that just left the area, moved out, uh, just had to relocate. I mean, this side of town was just devastated. We said to the clubs, sport and football is a priority. We have to have football played for, for our own benefits, to get the kids' mindset away from where we were. So every club agreed, OK, we'll try our best, even though the damage that we had, we'll try our best and we'll, we'll have a season, and we did. The most resilient thing with the clubs was they banded together. So clubs shared club rooms, clubs shared grounds. It was, wasn't uncommon for three clubs to share the same ground, which they would never have done in the past. When uh, New Zealand Football won the rights to host this event back in 2010, one of the first jobs was to decide which cities were going to get which games. And Christchurch put up its hand uh, for a significant role in the tournament. And you know, at that stage, it was still pretty early days in the recovery cycle. In 2012, the city still had a, a lot of damage. Uh, it was very overt. A lot of hotels were closed and the recovery, we were all optimistic it would happen, hadn't yet happened. Both government, FIFA and New Zealand football sat around the table and decided that it was a really good opportunity to help play a role in the rebuild effort and, and, uh, and I think it will. I think it's going to be a great legacy for Christchurch. We are absolutely on track. We take exclusive use of the stadium from Monday. We have quite a big build that we have to do. We have to build the stadium media centre, the players' tunnels, the mixed zone, and we're also subdividing the dressing rooms. So we have quite a big build, and we should hopefully be complete with the build by the 25th of May. Of course, we've got the, uh, the four new training grounds, which are you know, absolutely world-class, and uh, these teams will be blown away by the uh, quality of the surfaces they're going to get to train on here. What's happening in Christchurch now is that they're building a really good fields. Um, they've got some really good academies, they've got some really good coaches in the clubs. You know, so they're really, the, the, the young kids have got a pathway now. So like when I grew up, we actually didn't really have a pathway, you kind of just had to find your own, you find yourself. But now, there's an actual system in place and they've got something to work towards. Any sport you play, you've got to watch and you've got to see the best players. So if they can go and see a young Brazilian boy or a German boy, it gives them something to, to aim for and aspire to. You know, who knows what can happen. Look at, look at Ryan Nelson. You know, look at Ben Singman, the local Christchurch boy. He's had a great career at the Phoenix. So that's what every young kid who plays the game should be aspiring to do. It's huge. You know, Christchurch needs to have these tournaments so that the world can see that they're ready. And, you know, FIFA has also given Christchurch a semi-final, which is quite unheard of because we are one of the smaller stadiums, but it's FIFA's way of giving back to Christchurch. Oh!